Welcome to the Programming with Codia podcast. Learn to program on the iPad for the iPad. My name is Patrick Oxel, and today what we're going to do is we're going to revisit lesson four. If you remember from lesson four, we had our little beetle man, and when you touched him on the screen, he could move around. The only problem was we had this very complex code that you had to type in this if statement to define when you were actually touching the little beetle man. So the question you should have asked is, if I have several objects that I want to move around, do I have to retype this over and over again? And the short answer would be you would have to, but the long answer would be there has to be a better way than doing that. So today we're going to revisit this program and we're going to come up with a better way. So to start with, we're just going to make an exact copy of it. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete all the code that actually makes the little beetle man show up. And we're going to remove all that code we wrote for the touch events as well. So when we're done, we're just going to be left with our blank screen, hopefully. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove us from full screen. So there we are, we're back with a blank screen and we have our console window on the left hand side. So make it easier for us to do touch events, what we're going to do is we're going to add a library or a class to our program. So to do that, I'm just going to go to the internet and I'm going to go to a website called Pastebin where I have posted this helper class. So you'll notice it hopefully looks somewhat familiar because it's Codia code. This URL I will paste in the comments below. I'm going to just touch on raw, which will open a new window and just make it plain text. And then I'm just going to copy this completely and go back to Codia. In the top right hand side, there's a the little plus symbol. If you touch that, you'll notice there's two options, create a new class or create a blank file. We're going to create a blank file and we're going to call it the same thing. Helper class. And now we're going to take that code and just paste it in. So this code does several things. One of them is help us with touch events. We're going to use it often. So get used to copying it in. We're just going to take two little handles and move them off to the side and go back to our code. So what we're going to do is we're going to use that helper class to actually make a sprite object show up that will know when it's being touched and will let us drag it around. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a local variable, local to this file, but global, sorry, global to this file, but local to the program. And we're going to call it beetle. Then in setup, we're going to take this variable and we're going to what's called instantiate an object from that class. So what that just really means is we're going to use the code to make the object show up. So on the very end of IntelliSense, you'll see sprite object that comes from the code that was just provided. And in that code, you provide two parameters, the image that you want to show up and the location as a vector two. So I'm just going to get the image that we want, which is the beetle. So I'm going to go back and get the name for our beetle. Unfortunately, you can't just touch and make it show up like we did before. 
So normally I just have that as a placeholder and make it show up when we need. So there's the, the object. And the second is a vector 2, which we've used before. And it's the x and y coordinates, basically. So it's going to be a vector 2. And we're just going to put it in the middle once again. width divided by 2, and height divided by 2. I'm actually going to move it up slightly as well, because I'm going to have two objects eventually. So there we go. So that initially initializes our instance and makes a beetle at that location. Now if you run this, hopefully you'll remember that nothing should show up we don't have anything in our draw code. So we're going to go to draw and we're going to draw the beetle. So use the exact same variable and this time use a colon, full colon, and use the command draw. Now when we run it, the beetle shows up where it's supposed to. I'm actually touching it right now and you'll notice it's not moving around because we don't have any code in our touch event. So we're going to go back to the touch event, and we're going to take our same variable that's holding it. We're going to use the same colon, and we're going to use touch at event, and we're going to pass in touch from above. So now you will notice with just those three lines of code, the beetle shows up, and we can move him around. All the nastiness was written in that class to make that happen. So just as it's easy to make one, we're going to make a second one. So I'm going to make a planet show up. So we're going to go through the exact same process. We're going to reserve the variable as global to this form, global to this file. Extra end. And I know that the name of this is just called planet. And instead of being up, we're going to go down slightly. So it'll be below the other one. Once again, we're going to have to have draw. So our planet and the draw method. And we want our touch event as well. So hopefully with those three little lines of code, our planet shows up. And not only can the beetle move around, the planet can move around. Now there's one restriction. I can actually place two fingers on this. Normally, the iPad is a multi-touch, uh, can handle multi-touch. Unfortunately, this code that I created doesn't. I'm sure it is possible, but just for our simplicity, we're just going to make it so that it only moves one object at a time. So it's nice that we can make our objects show up and make them move around, but another common thing that is asked for an awful lot in programming is, can you tell me if the two objects are touching each other? And the answer to that is, you actually can, and it's very easy. So since you're asking a question, am I touching, that would be an if statement. So we're going to create an if statement, just like we did before. Every if, if statement must have some kind of Boolean expression. And our Boolean expression is going to be asking the beetle if it is touching the planet. So we're going to take our variable beetle and we're going to ask the question, is it touching? And then you have to pass in what you're interested in. And in our case, it's the planet. So this returns a true or a false, as all good Boolean expressions do. 
So if this is true, then we're going to do something. You'll notice Codia actually typed the end part of our if statement for us, which was very nice. So all we're going to do is we're going to print out to the console window that it is touching. So we'll go back. Once I start moving my planet around, you'll notice when I went close, it started saying touching over in the console window. Now there's one problem, when I move it away, the touching is still there. Because remember this happens 60 times as a second if we're lucky. So really what it should be doing is telling me when it's touching and when it's not touching. It should tell me that too. So we're going to go back and we're just going to make an else on our if statement. And we're going to say, if it's not touching, then print out not touching. And don't forget to move that back. So that's a good example of an if statement, an if else statement in Codia. So now when we go back, you'll notice if I move it around, it tells me we're not touching. When I do touch it, it switches to touching, and when I move back, it switches back to not touching. Now there's one little thing that might be a problem, but you just have to be aware of it. You'll notice that my planet is a circle. When I get close to the beetle, you'll notice it's already switched to touching, but clearly it's not touching. So the reason is that this is actually doing something called box detection, and it draws a box around my planet, and at the moment, if that box is touching the box that is around the beetle. So it doesn't do perfect what's called pixel detection. It does box detection, which for most things for us is good enough. So we're just gonna stay with that. So that's all for today. Important thing to remember is how to go get the helper class and how to drop it into your code, and then how to actually reference the helper class and use those objects so you're using the code that was written to help you out. And that's it for today.